Section 6 of Poems of American History, Volume 5, The Period of Expansion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ed Humple. Poems of American History, Volume 5, The Period of Expansion, by Various. Chapter 5 the war with spain section one for three centuries and a half spain held possession of the island of cuba although she had lost long before her possessions in north and south america the cubans desired freedom for the spanish yoke was a galling one and as early as eighteen twenty two sympathy with this desire was openly expressed in the united states apostrophe to the island of cuba November, 1822. There is blood on thy desolate shore, thou island of plunder and slaves. Thy billows are purpled with gore, and murder has crimsoned thy waves. The vengeance of nations will come, and wrath shall be rained on thy head, and in terror thy voice shall be dumb, when they ask for their brothers who bled. Thy hand was not stirred when their life-blood was spilt, and therefore that hand must partake in the guilt. Thou art guilty or weak, and the rod should be wrenched from thy palsied hand. By the pirate thy green fields are trod, and his steps have polluted thy land. Unmoved is thy heart and thine eye, when our dear ones are tortured and slain but their blood with a terrible cry calls on vengeance and calls not in vain. If Europe regard not, our land shall awake, and thy walls and thy turrets shall tremble and shake. The voice of a world shall be heard, and thy faith shall be tried by the call, and that terrible voice shall be feared and obeyed, or the proud one shall fall. Enough of our life has been shed in watching and fighting for thee. If thy foot linger still on thy head, the guilt and the vengeance shall be. We have sworn that the spirit of Allen shall lead, and our wrath shall not rest till we finish the deed. James Gates Percival The people of Cuba revolted against their Spanish rulers in 1848 and kept up a guerrilla warfare for some years. In August, 1851, a filibustering expedition, led by Narciso Lopez, sailed from New Orleans. The expedition was captured, and most of its members were executed, among them Lopez himself, and Colonel William L. Crittenden of Kentucky, who, with fifty others, was shot at Havana, August 16th. The Gallant Fifty One, who formed part of the Lopez expedition and were executed by the Spanish authorities in Havana, August sixteenth, eighteen fifty one. Freedom called them, up they rose, grasped their swords and showered blows on the head of freedom's foes and freedom's foes alone. Fate decreed that they should die, pitying angels breathed a sigh, freedom wildly wept on high for the gallant fifty-one. There they stood in proud array, none for mercy there would pray, none would coward looks betray, all stood forth with fearless eye, showing by their dauntless air what their noble souls could dare, showing to the tyrants there how freedom's sons could die. None there strove their fate to shun, gallant band of fifty-one. Then a voice the stillness broke, Twas their gallant leader spoke, Scorning to receive death's stroke, Kneeling humbly on the sod, Gazing calmly on the dead, Whose life-blood had just been shed, Proudly then the words he said, Americans kneel but to God. Perish thus Kentucky's son, Leader of the fifty-one. Rejoice, sons of Thermopylae, kindred spirits join with thee, who fell in fight for liberty, for freedom's sacred name. Future days their deeds shall tell, how they nobly fought and fell, youthful bosoms proudly swell at mention of their fame. Rays of light from freedom's sun, gallant band of fifty-one. 
honor's rays will ever shed glory round their hallowed bed though their hearts are cold and dead though their sands of life have run still their names revered will be among the noble and the free glorious sons of liberty gallant band of fifty one henry linden flash spain at last found it necessary to put the whole island under martial law and american sympathy grew more outspoken cuba 1870 is it not is it not that the south wind brings her wail to our shore that the spoilers compass our desolate sister is it not must we say to her strive no more with the lips wherewith we loved her and kissed her with the mocking lips wherewith we said thou art the dearest and fairest to us of all the daughters the sea hath bred of all green girdled eyes that woo us is it not must ye wait must ye wait till they ravage her gardens of orange and palm till her heart is dust till her strength is water must ye see them trample her and be calm as priests when a virgin is led to slaughter shall they smite the marvel of all lands the nation's longing the earth's completeness on her red mouth dripping myrrh her hands filled with fruitage and spice and sweetness must ye wait in the day in the night in the burning day in the dolorous night her sun-brown cheeks are stained with weeping her watch-fires beacon the misty height why are her friends and lovers sleeping ye at whose ear the flatterer bends who were my kindred before all others hath he set your hearts afar my friends hath he made ye alien my brothers day and night hear ye not hear ye not from the hollow sea the sound of her voice the passionate far-off tone which saith alas my brothers alas what choice the lust that shameth the sword that slayeth they bind me they rend my delicate locks they shred the beautiful robes i won me my round limbs bleed on the mountain rocks save me ere they have quite undone me hear ye not hear ye not speak at last speak at last in the might of your strength in the strength of your right speak out at last to the treacherous spoiler say will ye harry her in our sight ye shall not trample her down nor soil her loose her bonds let her rise in her loveliness our virginal sister or if ye shame her dark amnon shall rue for her sore distress and her sure revenge shall be that of tamar speak at last Edmund Clarence Stedman. Then, in 1873, came what was certain to come, sooner or later, an outrage by Spain against the United States. The Virginius, a vessel of American register, was captured on the high seas by a Spanish gunboat, taken to a Cuban fort, and some fifty of her officers and crew, Americans for the most part, summarily shot. America was wild with rage, but Spain was permitted to settle by paying an indemnity. The Gospel of Peace, 1873 Aye, let it rest, and give us peace. Tis but another blot on freedom's fustian flag, and gold will gild the unclean spot. Yes, fold the hands and bear the wrong, as Christians over meek, and wipe away the bloody stain and turn the other cheek what boots the loss of freeman's blood beside imperiled gold is honor more than merchandise and cannot pride be sold let cuba groan let patriots fall americans may die our flag may droop in foul disgrace but peace be still our cry ay give us peace and give us truth to nature to resign the counterfeit which freedom wears upon her banner fine remove the stars they light our shame but keep the stripes of gore and craven white to tell the wrong a prudent nation bore james jeffrey roche the insurrection in cuba dragged on its horrors steadily increasing and at last in eighteen seventy five the american government intimated that if spain did not stop the war foreign intervention might become necessary 
Spain took the hint and ended the struggle by granting Cuba certain reforms. Cuba Isle of a summer sea, fragrant with Eden's flowers, God meant thee to be free, and wills thee to be ours. The blood of generous hearts has freely drenched thy soil, that blood but strength imparts which tyrants cannot foil. Within thy fair retreat, mid victory and flame, thy sons shall yet repeat huzzas in freedom's name. Yet where his ashes rest, whose eye revealed a world, from towers and mountains crest, our flag shall be unfurled. In truth, it is but just that freedom's hand should hold, confined to her trust, the key to lands of gold. Harvey Rice But with a cynical disregard of good faith, Spain kept only such of her promises as she pleased. Increased abuses followed, and in 1895 revolution flamed out again. Under such leaders as Gomez, Maceo, and Garcia, the revolutionists soon gained control of most of the provinces. Cuba to Colombia, April 1896 A voice went over the waters, a stormy edge of the sea. Fairest of freedom's daughters, have you no help for me? Do you not hear the rusty chain clanking about my feet? Have you not seen my children slain, whether in cell or street? Oh, if you were sad as I, and I as you were strong, you would not have to call or cry, you would not suffer long. Patience, have I not learned it under the crushing years? Freedom, have I not earned it, toiling with blood and tears? Not of you, my banners wave, not on Egyptian shore, or by Armenia's mammoth grave, but at your very door. Oh, if you were needy as I, and I as you were strong, you should not suffer bleed and die under the hoofs of wrong. Is it that you have never felt the oppressor's hand, fighting with fond endeavor to cling to your own sweet land? Were you not half dismayed there in the century's night, till to your view a sister's aid came like a flash of light? Oh, what gift could ever be grand enough to pay the debt, if out of the starry western land should come my Lafayette? Will Carleton American sympathy was soon awakened and grew rapidly in strength. This was increased when Spain placed Valeriano Whaler in command in Cuba. Whaler had an evil reputation for cruelty and extortion, and at once proceeded to make it more evil by exterminating the pacificos, or quiet people, who were taking no active part in the war. Cuba Libre Comes a cry from Cuban water, from the warm dusk Antilles, from the lost Atlanta's daughter, drowned in blood as drowned in seas. Comes a cry of purpled anguish, see her struggles, hear her cries, shall she live or shall she languish, shall she sink or shall she rise? She shall rise by all that's holy, she shall live and she shall last, rise as we when crushed and lowly from the blackness of the past. Bid her strike, lo, it is written, blood for blood and life for life, bid her smite as she is smitten, stars and stripes were born of strife. Once we flashed her lights of freedom, lights that dazzled her dark eyes, till she could but yearning heed them, reach her hands and try to rise, till they stabbed her, choked her, drowned her, till we scarce could hear a note. Ah, those rusting chains that bound her, oh, these robbers at her throat. And the kind who forged the fetters, ask five hundred years for news, Stake and thumbscrew for their betters, inquisitions, banished Jews, chains and slavery, what reminder of one red man in that land, why these very chains that bind her, bound Columbus, foot and hand. Shall she rise as rose Columbus from his chains, from shame and wrong, rise as morning matchless wondrous, rise as some rich morning song, rise a ringing song and story, valor, love personified, 
stars and stripes espouse her glory love and liberty allied joaquin miller the situation of americans in havana began to cause uneasiness and it was decided to send a ship of war to that port the battleship maine was selected for this duty and reached havana on the morning of january twenty fourth eighteen ninety eight the parting of the ways untrammeled giant of the west with all of nature's gifts endowed with all of heaven's mercy blessed nor of thy power unduly proud peerless in courage force and skill and godlike in thy strength of will before thy feet the ways divide one path leads up to heights sublime the other downward slopes where bide the refuse and the wrecks of time choose then nor falter at the start o choose the nobler path and part be thou the guardian of the weak of the unfriended thou the friend no guerdon for thy valour seek no end beyond the avowed end wouldst thou thy godlike power preserve be godlike in the will to serve joseph b gilder on the morning of february sixteenth eighteen ninety eight the news flashed over the country that on the previous evening the main had been blown up at her anchorage and that two hundred and sixty four men and two officers had been killed the men of the main february fifteenth eighteen ninety eight not in the dire and sanguined front of war conquered or conqueror mid the dread battle peal did they go down to the still under seas with fair renown to weave for them the hero martyr's crown they struck no blow gainst an embattled foe with valiant hearted saxon hardihood they stood not as the essex sailors stood so sore bestead in that far chilean bay yet no less faithful they these men who in a passing of the breath were hurled upon death no warning the salt-scented sea-wind bore no presage whispered from the cuban shore of the appalling fate that in the tropic night-time lay in wait to bear them whence they shall return no more some lapsed from dreams of home and love's clear star into a realm where dreams eternal are and some into a world of wave and flame wherewith they came to living agony that no words can name tears for them all and the low-tuned dirge funeral their place is now with those who wear green set about the brow the deathless immortales the heroes torn and scarred whose blood made red the barren ocean dells fighting with him the gallant ranger bore daring to do what none had dared before to wave new world banner freedom starred at england's very door yet with such noble ones their names shall stand as those who heard the dying lawrence speak his burning words upon the chesapeake and grappled in the hopeless hand to hand with those who fell on erie and champlain beneath the pouring pitiless battle rain with such as these our lost men of the main what though they faced no storm of iron hail that freedom and the right might still prevail the path of duty it was theirs to tread to death's dark vale through ways of travail led and they are ours our dead if it be true that each loss holds a gain it must be ours through saddened eyes to see from out this tragic holocaust of pain the whole land bound in closer amity clinton scholard the word of the lord from havana february sixteenth eighteen ninety eight thus spake the lord because ye have not heard because ye have given no heed to my people in their need because the oppressed cried from the dust where he died and ye turned your face away from his cry in that day because ye have bought and sold that which is above gold because your brother is slain while ye get you drunk with gain behold these are my people i have brought them to birth on whom the mighty have trod the kings of earth saith the lord god 
because ye have fawned and bowed down lest the spoiler frown and the wrongs that the spoiled have borne ye have held in scorn therefore with rending and flame i have marred and smitten you therefore i have given you to shame that the nations shall spit on you therefore my angel of death hath stretched out his hand on you therefore i speak in my wrath laying command on you once have i bared my sword and the kings of the earth gave a cry twice have i bared my sword that the kings of the earth should die thrice shall i bear my sword and ye shall know my name that it is i ye who held peace less than right when a king laid a pitiful tax on you hold not your hand from the fight when freedom cries under the axe on you i who called france to you call you to cuba in turn repay lest i cast you adrift and you perish astern ye who made war that your ships should lay to at the beck of no nation make war now on murder that slips the lease of her hounds of damnation ye who remembered the alamo remember the main richard hovey half mast february sixteenth eighteen ninety eight on every schoolhouse ship and staff from frisco clear to marblehead let droop the starry banner now in sorrow for our sailors dead half mast half mast o'er all the land the verdict wait your wrath restrain half mast for all the gallant band the sailors of the main not till a treachery is proved his sword the patriot soldier draws war is the last alternative be patient till ye know the cause meanwhile half mast o'er all the land the verdict wait your wrath restrain half mast for all the gallant band the martyrs of the main lloyd mifflin the fighting race february sixteenth eighteen ninety eight read out the names and burke sat back and kelly drooped his head while shea they call him scholar jack went down the list of the dead officers seamen gunners marines the crews of the gig and yawl the bearded man and the lad in his teens carpenters coal passers all then knocking the ashes from out his pipe said burke in an offhand way we're all in that dead man's list by cripe kelly and burke and shea well here's to the main and i'm sorry for spain said kelly and burke and shea wherever there's kelly's there's trouble said burke wherever fighting's the game or a spice of danger in grown man's work said kelly you'll find my name and do we fall short said burke getting mad when it's touch and go for life said shea it's thirty odd years bedad since i charged to drum and fife up mary's heights and my old canteen stopped a rebel ball on its way there were blossoms of blood on our sprigs of green kelly and burke and shea and the dead didn't brag well here's to the flag said kelly and burke and shea i wish twas in ireland for there's the place said burke that we'd die by right in the cradle of our soldier race after one good stand-up fight my grandfather fell on vinegar hill and fighting was not his trade but his rusty pikes in the cabin still with hessian blood on the blade ay ay said kelly the pikes were great when the word was clear the way we were thick on the roll in ninety eight kelly and burke and shea well here's to the pike and the sword and the like said kelly and burke and shea and shea the scholar with rising joy said we were at ramillies we left our bones at fontenoy and up in the pyrenees before dunkirk on landon's plain cremona lil and ghent we're all over austria france and spain wherever they pitched a tent we've died for england from waterloo to egypt and dargai and still there's enough for a corps or crew kelly and burke and shea well here's to good honest fighting blood said kelly and burke and shea oh the fighting races don't die out if they seldom die in bed for love is first in their hearts no doubt said burke then kelly said 
when Michael, the Irish archangel, stands, the angel with the sword, and the battle dead from a hundred lands, arranged in one big horde, our line that for Gabriel's trumpet waits will stretch three deep that day, from Jehoshaphat to the Golden Gates, Kelly and Burke and Shea. Well, here's thank God for the race and the sod, said Kelly and Burke and Shea. Joseph I. C. Clark a wave of fierce wrath swept over the American people. But Captain Sigsby, of the destroyed ship, asked that judgment be suspended till the cause of the accident had been investigated. ON THE EVE OF WAR O God of battles, who art still, the God of love, the God of rest, subdue thy people's fiery will, and quell the passions in their breast. Before we bathe our hands in blood, we lift them, to thy holy rood. The waiting nations hold their breath to catch the dreadful battle cry, and in the silence as of death the fateful hours go softly by. O oh, hear thy people where they pray, and shrive our souls before the fray. Before the sun of peace shall set, we kneel apart a solemn while. Pity the eyes with sorrow wet, but pity most the lips that smile. The night comes fast, we hear afar the baying of the wolves of war. Not lightly, O oh, not lightly, Lord, let this awful task begin. Speak from thy throne a warning word above the angry faction's din. If this be thy most holy will, be with us still, be with us still. Donske Dandridge, Good Friday, 1898 Spain, without waiting for investigation, announced that the main had been blown up by an explosion of her magazines, due to the carelessness of her officers. The American people waited in ominous silence for the investigation to be concluded. To Spain, a last word. Iberian, palter no more. By thine hands, thine alone, they were slain. Oh, twas a deed in the dark. Yet mark, we will show you a way, only one, by which ye may blot out the stain. Build them a monument, whom to death sleep, in their sleep ye betrayed. Proud and stern let it be, Cuba free. So only the stain shall be raised, so only the great debt be paid. Edith M. Thomas Meanwhile the sailor dead were buried in the cemetery at Havana, with impressive ceremony. They were afterwards disinterred and placed in the military cemetery at Arlington on the Potomac. The Martyrs of the Maine And they have thrust our shattered dead away in foreign graves. Exiled forever from the port, the homesick sailor craves. They trusted once in Spain, they're trusting her again, and with the holy care of our own sacred slain, no. No, the stripes and stars must wave above our tars. Bring them home. On a thousand hills the darling dead of all our battles lie, in nooks of peace, with flowers and flags, but now they seem to cry, from out their biovac, here every good man Jack belongs. Nowhere but here, with us. So bring them back, and on the Cuban gales a ghostly rumor wails, bring us home. Poltroon, the people that neglects to guard the bones, the dust, the revered relics its warriors have bequeathed in trust. But heroes, too, were these who sentineled the seas, who gave their lives to shelter us in careless ease. Shall we desert them, slain, and proffer them to Spain as alien mendicants, these martyrs of our main? No, bring them home. Rupert Hughes at last the investigation was ended, and showed that the main had been blown up from the outside, probably by a submarine mine, exploded by men who wore the uniform of Spain. The report reached Congress March 28, 1898, and on April 11th President McKinley asked Congress for authority to establish an independent government in Cuba. El Emplazado El Emplazado, the summoned, the doomed one, Spain whom the nations denounce and abhor. Robe thy dismay in the black San Benito, 
come to the frowning tribunal of war. Cursed were thy minions, their roster and scutcheon, Alvas, Alfonsos, archarchons of hate, pillared on bigotry, pride and extortion, topples to ruin thy mansion of state violence cruelty intrigue and treason these false courtiers who flattered thy throne empires thy sisters forebode thee disaster even thy children their mother disown suppliant cuba thy daughter forsaken famished and bleeding and buffeted sore ghastly from gashes and stabs of thy rancor binds up her wounds at an alien door courts and corregidors erst at thy bidding banished or butchered moresco and jew ghosts from all christendom shades of the martyrs flock from the sepulchre thee to pursue wrath of retributive justice o'ertakes thee brand of time's malice and blisters thy brow armed caballeros and crowned kings of bourbon all are unable to succor thee now el emplazado the summoned the doomed one god's inquisition condemns thee to-day earth-shaking cannon-balls thunder thy sentence Heaven re-echoes the auto da fe. William Henry Venable On April 19th, 1898, Congress adopted a resolution declaring that Spanish rule in Cuba must cease, recognizing the independence of the Cubans and empowering the President to use the entire land and naval forces of the United States to drive Spain from the island. It was, in effect, a declaration of war. Battle Song When the vengeance wakes, when the battle breaks, and the ships sweep out to sea, when the foe is neared, when the decks are cleared, and the colors floating free, when the squadrons meet, when it's fleet to fleet, and front to front with Spain, from ship to ship, from lip to lip, pass on the quick refrain, Remember, remember the main. When the flag shall sign, advance in line, train ships on an even keel. When the guns shall flash and the shot shall crash and bound on the ringing steel. When the rattling blasts from the armored masts are hurtling their deadliest rain, let their voices loud through the blinding cloud cry ever the fierce refrain. Remember, remember the main. God's sky and sea in that storm shall be fate's chaos of smoke and flame. But across that hell every shot shall tell, not a gun can miss its aim. Not a blow shall fail on the crumbling mail, and the waves that engulf the slain shall sweep the decks of the blackened wrecks with a thundering dread refrain. Remember, remember the main. Robert Burns Wilson England was the only country in Europe whose sympathies were openly with the United States. In France, Italy, and elsewhere, the hostility to America was bitter and outspoken. Greeting from England America, dear brother land, while yet the shotted guns are mute, accept a brotherly salute, a hearty grip of England's hand. Tomorrow, when the sulphurous glow of war shall dim the stars above, be sure the star of England's love is over you, come weal or woe. Go forth in hope, go forth in might, to all your nobler self be true, that coming times may see in you the vanguard of the hosts of light. Though wrathful justice load in train, your guns, be every breach they make, a gateway pierced for mercy's sake, that peace may enter in and reign. Then should the hosts of darkness band against you, lowering thunderously, Flash the word brother o'er the sea, and England at your side shall stand. Exulting, for, though dark the night, and sinister with scud and rack, the hour that brings us back to back, but harbingers the larger light. London Chronicle, April twenty second, 1898 Diplomatic relations between Spain and the United States were at once severed, and on April 25, 1898, Congress formally declared that war with the Kingdom of Spain had existed since April 21st. The first blow was to be struck with surprising suddenness. Battle Cry, May 1st, 1898 The loud drums are rolling, 
the mad trumpets blow to battle the war is begun and we go to humble the pride of an arrogant foe the ensign and standard which wave for the crown of castile and aragon trample them down granada and leon and haughty navarre shall lower their banner to cuba's lone star now under old glory the blue and the gray united march shoulder to shoulder away to meet the hidalgos in furious fray with musket and haversack ready are we to tramp the globe over to sweep every sea from isles of dead philip to florida's key we think of the main and our hot bosoms swell with rage of love's sorrow which vengeance must quell and then we are ready to storm gates of hell our flag streams aloft by the tempest unfurled we strike for a continent nay for the world mean tuckle up harson the thunder is hurled the ensign and standard which wave for the crown of castile and aragon trample them down granada and leon and haughty navarre shall lower their banner to cuba's lone star william henry venable thousands of miles away across the pacific lay another island dependency of spain the philippines the navy department with singular foresight had been gradually increasing the asiatic squadron commanded by commodore george dewey and that officer was carefully preparing for the work he saw before him the fleet was assembled at hong kong and on april twenty sixth eighteen ninety eight came a cablegram to dewey stating that war had commenced and ordering him to proceed at once to the philippines and capture or destroy the spanish fleet there at two o'clock the next afternoon the american fleet started on its six hundred mile journey it reached manila on the night of april thirtieth and steamed straight into the harbor just one signal may first eighteen ninety eight the war path is true and straight it knoweth no left or right why ponder and wonder and vacillate the way to fight is to fight the officer of the deck hath climbed to a perch aloft he leaned far out and he craned his neck and his tones were gentle and soft i see he whispered off there to port through the night shade lesser black the darker blur of the outer fort preparing for the attack they signaled it so the sharp and short the answer was signaled back keep on again from the upper air came the quiet voice of the guide the admiral's flagship's over there two miles on the starboard side it's a long long way for the best of eyes but i know her by moon or sun i know her by lines and i know her by size and there goes her warning gun that boat will make a most excellent prize said the admiral when we've won keep on the whispering came again i think by the hints and signs appearing ahead of us now and then that we're getting among their minds ten fathom in front as the searchlights show i fancy that i can detect the line of their outermost works ah no it is nearer than i'd suspect the message was sent to the admiral so and he answered to this effect keep on the haze of the dawning day slid into the shades of night and he called off there in the upper bay they're lining their ships for a fight i think they are training on us no more he said for the dawn was lit by the blaze of a gun from the neighboring shore and he fell to the deck hard hit they signaled the first man struck as before the admiral answered it keep on the sun came over the hills as wishing a world-wide wheel and the guns were fired with the aim that kills and steel pierced heart of steel in the line of shore was the fringe of hell and the center of hell was the sea and the woe was the woe no tongue may tell and no eye view tearlessly and over that crater of bomb and shell the signal continued to be keep on o lawrence whose passing cry grows ever the more sublime and thou o nile king whose word shall die when we learn the death of time we send you the third of a glorious three we send you a battle shout that echoes up from the blood-thick sea and up from the wreck and rout and down from the staff on the high cross tree where the flag is signaling out keep on the war path is true and straight it knoweth no left or right mars loves not the man who would deviate for the way to fight is to fight 
End of section six. Section seven of Poems of American History, Volume five, The Period of Expansion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ed Humple. Poems of American History, Volume five, The Period of Expansion. Chapter five, Part two. The War with Spain. A shot from Corregidor and another from El Fraile told that the fleet was discovered, but the ships glided quietly on, and at dawn the Spanish fleet was seen anchored under the batteries of Cavite. Dewey steamed straight for them. The Spanish ships were sunk, one after another, by the deadly fire of the American gunners, and by noon the Spanish fleet had been destroyed, the shore batteries silenced, and a white flag floated over the citadel of Cavite. Dewey had not lost a man, and had won the greatest naval battle since Trafalgar. Dewey at Manila, May 1st, 1898 T'was the very verge of May, when the bold Olympia led into Boca Grande Bay Dewey's squadron, dark and dread, creeping past Corregidor, guardian of Manila's shore. Do they sleep who wait the fray? Is the moon so dazzling bright that our cruiser's battle gray melts into the misty light? Ah, the red flash and the roar wakes at last Corregidor. All too late their screaming shell tears the silence with its track. This is but the gate of hell. We've no leisure to turn back. Answer, Concord, then once more. Slumber on, Corregidor. And as, like a slowing tide, onward still the vessels creep, Dewey watching, falcon-eyed, orders, let the gunners sleep, For we meet a foe at four, fiercer than Corregidor. Well they slept, for well they knew what the morrow taught us all, He was wise as well as true, thus upon the foe to fall. Long shall Spain the day deplore, Dewey ran Corregidor. May is dancing into light as the Spanish admiral from a dream of phantom fight wakens at his sentry's call. Shall he leave Cavite's lee, hunt the Yankee fleet at sea? O oh, Montoyo, to thy deck, that today shall float its last. Quick, to quarters, yonder speck grows a hull of portent vast. Hither, toward Cavite's lee, comes the Yankee hunting thee. Not for fear of hidden mine halts our doughty Commodore. He of old heroic line follows Farragut once more, hazards all on victory here within Cavite's lee. If he loses, all is gone. He will win because he must, and the shafts of yonder dawn are not thicker than his thrust. Soon, Montoyo, he shall be with thee in Cavite's lee. Now, Manila, to the fray, show the hated Yankee host this is not a holiday. Spanish blood is more than boast, fleet and mine and battery, crush him in Cavite's lee. Lo, hell's geysers at our fore pierce the plotted path in vain, nerving every man the more with the memory of the main. Now at last our guns are free, here within Cavite's lee. Gridley, says the Commodore, you may fire when ready, then, long and loud like lions roar, when a rival dares the den, breaks the awful cannonry, full across Cavite's lee. Who shall tell the daring tale of our thunderbolt's attack, finding when the chart should fail, by the lead his dubious track, five ships following faithfully, five times o'er the Cavite's lee? Of our gunner's deadly aim, of the gallant foe and brave, Who unconquered faced with flame, seek the mercy of the wave, Choosing honor in the sea, underneath Cavite's lee. Let the mead the victors gain be the measure of their task, Less of flinching, stouter strain, fiercer combat, who could ask, And surrender, t'was a word that Cavite ne'er had heard. Noon the woeful work is done, not a Spanish ship remains, but of their eleven none 
ever was so truly Spain's, which is prouder, they or we, thinking of Cavite's Lee. Envoy But remember when we've ceased, giving praise and reckoning odds, man shares courage with the beast, wisdom cometh from the gods. Who would win on land or wave must be wise as well as brave. Robert Underwood Johnson Dewey and His Men May 1st, 1898 Glistening high in the midnight sky, the starry rockets soar, to crown the height so soon to be uncrowned, Corregidor. And moaning into the middle night resounds the answering shock from Fraley's island battery within the living rock, like Fargat before him, so Dewey down the bay, past fort and mine in single line, holds on toward Cavite. When the earth was new, a raven flew o'er the sea on a perilous quest, by his broad black pinions buoyed up as he sought him a spot to rest. So to-day from British China sweeps our Commodore mid the cheers of England's dauntless ships of steel, and into the night he steers, with never a home but the furrowy foam, and never a place for ease, save the place he'll win by the dint and din of his long lean batteries. A misty dawn on the May day shone, yet the enemy sees afar. On our ships of war great flags flung out as bright as the morning star. Then the cannon of Spain crash over the main, and their splendor flecks the ports, as the crackling thunder rolls along the frowning fleet and forts. But the Olympia in her majesty leads up the broadening bay, and behind her come gaunt ships and dumb toward crested Cavite. All pearl and rose the dawnlight glows, and ruddy and gray the gloom of battle over their squadron sinks as we sweep like a vast simoon when our broadsides flash and ring at last in a hoarsening staggering crush on the arsenal and fleet in wrath our lurid lightnings rush malate knows us cavite cana coca crazed with hate but corregidor shall speak no more el fraile fears his fate montoyo fights as fought the knights by the cid campeador he leaves his flagship all afire the cuba takes him o'er the Don Antonio roars in flames, the Austria lights and lifts. From Sangley to Manila Mole the battle vapor drifts. But the Queen Christine in one great blast dies as becomes her name. Her funeral shroud a pillar of cloud, all filigreed with flame. From peak to peak our quick flags speak, the rattling chorus ends. And cheer on cheer rolls o'er the sea at the word the signal sends. From Commodore to Powder Boy, from Bridge to Stoker's Den, No battle rips have found our ships, nor wounds nor death our men. We cheer and rest, we rest and cheer, and ever above the tides, The flag that knows no conquering foes in newer glory rides. When the reek of war is rolled afar by the breezes down the bay, We turn our deadly guns again on the walls of Cavite. The Spaniard dreamed of victory, his final hope is flown, as winged destruction up and down our batteries have strown. In horrid havoc, red and black, the storm throbs on amain, till in the glare of carnage there fade all the flags of Spain. In old Madrid sad eyes are hid for an empire sore bestead. Manila's mad with misery, Havana sick with dread. As the great bells toll each gallant soul, Castile shall see no more. Toll Fraley's rock, a thing for sport, toll lost Corregidor. Spain's fortresses are fluttering, with banners blanched and pale. Her admiralty in agony lies, shattered steam and sail. And the home we sought was cheaply bought, for no mother, wife, nor maid. From Maine to Loma Point bewails the land for whom she prayed. Now everywhere, from Florida to the blue Vancouver Straits, the flag we've flown abroad is thrown, and a word of cheer awaits. The ships and men that never failed the nation from her birth have done again all ships and men may do upon this earth. Glistening high in the noontide sky, the starry banners soar, to crown anew the height so soon uncrowned Corregidor. 
they bring the promise of the free to Philip's jeweled isles, and hearts oppressed thrill hard with hope whene'er that promise smiles. For the spirit of old Ironsides broods o'er that tropic bay, and the wildfire lights as dewy fights on the broad Manila Bay. Wallace Rice Off Manila Ay, lads, ay, we fought em, and we sent em to the bottom. And you'll say I'm a-talkin' like a silly. I hear your cheers and jokes, but, lads, them's human folks, what is soakin' in the water off Manila. Ay, lads, and when we shot, it's just as like as not, we hit some mother's heart in old Granadee. She didn't sink no main way over there in Spain, but she won't never see her laddie's body. I can see a black-eyed gal, something like my little Sal, what is crying out her eyes in old Seville. There's a widow in Madrid with a poor little kid, and his daddy has went down off Manila. Ay, lads, ay, we fought em, and we sent em to the bottom, and I hopes you won't be thinking I'm a booby, but that little black-eyed gal, what reminds me so of Sal, she didn't never do no harm to Cuby. And if instead of Sanchi it had been the hated Yankee, which you know, my lads, is me and Jack and Billy, you know who would be crying for us fellows what was dying and a-soakin' in the water off Manila. Edmund Vance Cook Manila Bay From keel to fighting top I love our Asiatic fleet. I love our officers and crews who'd rather fight than eat. I love the breakfast ordered up when enemies ran short. But most I love our chaplain with his head out of the port. Now a naval chaplain cannot charge as chaplains can on land. With his Bible in his pocket, his revolver in his hand, he must wait and help the wounded. No danger must he court. So our chaplain helped the wounded with his head out of the port. Beneath his red and yellow, at bay the Spaniards stood, till the yellow rose in fire, and the crimson sank in blood, until the last fouled rifle sped its impotent retort, our chaplain watched the Spaniard, with his head out of the port. Then here's our admiral on the bridge, above the bursting shell, and here's our sailors who went in for victory or hell. And here's the ships, and here's the guns that silenced fleet and fort. But don't forget our chaplain, with his head out of the port. Arthur Hale, May 1st, 1898 A Ballad of Manila Bay Your threats how vain, Corregidor! Your rampired batteries feared no more! Your frowning guard at Manila Gate, when our captain went before! Lights out, into the unknown gloom, from the windy, glimmering, wide sea room, challenging fate, in that dark strait, we dared the hidden doom. But the death in the deep awoke not then, mine and torpedo they spoke not then, from the heights that loomed on our passing line, the thunders broke not then. Safe through the perilous dark we sped, quiet each ship as the quiet dead, till the guns of El Fraile roared too late, and the steel prows forged ahead. Mute each ship as the mute mouth grave, a ghost leviathan cleaving the wave, but deep in its heart the great fires throb, the travailing engines rave. The ponderous pistons urge like fate, the red-throat furnaces roar elate, and the sweating stokers stagger and swoon in a heat more fierce than hate. So through the dark we stole our way, past the grim waters and into the bay, past Calibayo and past Salinas, and came at the break of day, where strong Cavite stood to oppose, where, from a sheen of silver and rose, a thronging of masts, a soaring of towers, the beautiful city arose. How fine and fair! But the shining air, with a thousand shattered thunders there, flapped and reeled, for the fighting foe, we had caught him in his lair. Surprised, unready, his proud ships lay, idly at anchor in Bacor Bay. 
unready surprised but proudly bold which was ever the spaniard's way then soon on his pride the dread doom fell red doom for the ruin of shot and shell lit every vomiting bursting hulk with a crimson reek of hell but to the brave though beaten hail all hail to them that dare and fail to the dauntless boat that charged our fleet and sank in the iron hail manila bay manila bay how proud the song on our lips to-day a brave old song of the true and strong and the will that has its way of the blood that told in the days of drake when the fight was good for the fighting's sake for the blood that fathered farragut is the blood that fathered blake and the pride of the blood will not be undone while wars in the world in a fight to be won for the master now as the master of old is the man behind the gun the dominant blood that daunts the foe that laughs at odds and leaps to the blow it is dewey's glory to-day as nelson's a hundred years ago charles george douglas roberts the battle of manila a fragment may first eighteen ninety eight by Cavite on the bay, twas the Spanish squadron lay, and the red dawn was creeping o'er the city that lay sleeping to the east like a bride in the May. There was peace at Manila, in the May morn at Manila, when Ho, the Spanish admiral, awoke to find our line, had passed by gray Corregidor, had laughed at shoal and mine, and flung to the sky its banners, with remember for the sign with the ships of spain before in the shelter of the shore and the forts on the right they drew forward to the fight and the first was the gallant commodore in the bay of manila in the doomed bay of manila with succor half the world away no port beneath that sky with nothing but the ships and guns and yankee pluck to try they had left retreat behind them they had come to win or die for we spoke at manila we said it at manila o oh, be ye brave or be ye strong ye build our ships in vain the children of the sea queen's brood will not give up the main we hold the sea against the world as we held it against spain be warned by manila take warning by manila ye may trade by land ye may fight by land ye may hold the land in fee but not go down to the sea in ships to battle with the free for england and america will keep and hold the sea richard hovey this remarkable victory amazed the world and set america wild with excitement and enthusiasm dewey became a popular hero and congress made haste to revive the grade of admiral and to confer it upon him dewey in manila bay he took a thousand islands and he didn't lose a man raise your heads and cheer him as he goes he licked the sneaky spaniard till the fellow cut and ran her fighting's part of what a yankee knows he fought him and he licked him without any fuss or flam it was only his profession for to win he sank their boats beneath him and he spared em as they swam and then he sent his ambulances in he had no word to cheer him and had no bands to play he had no crowds to make his duty brave but he risked the deep torpedoes as the breaking of the day for he knew he had our self-respect to save he flew the angry signal crying justice for the main he flew it from his flagship as he fought he drove the tardy vengeance in the very teeth of spain and he did it just because he thought he ought he busted up their batteries and sank eleven ships he knew what he was doing every bit he set the maxims going like a hundred cracking whips and every shot that crackled was a hit he broke em and he drove em and he didn't care at all he only liked to do as he was bid he crumpled up their squadron and their batteries and all he knew he had to lick em and he did and when the thing was finished and they flew the frightened flag he slung his guns and sent his foot ashore he gathered in their wounded and he quite forgot to brag for he thought he did his duty nothing more 
Oh, he took a thousand islands, and he didn't lose a man. Raise your heads and cheer him as he goes. He licked the sneaky Spaniard till the fellow cut and ran, for fighting's part of what a Yankee knows. R. V. Risley Another fleet, and a much more powerful one than Dewey's, had been collected at Key West under command of Admiral Sampson, ready to proceed to Cuba, and on April 21st orders came for it to sail. On the morning of April 22nd, it put to sea and steamed slowly off toward Havana. Mene, Mene, Tekel Abharsen April 22nd, 1898 Behold, we have gathered together our battleships, near and afar. Their decks they have cleared for action, their guns they are primed for war. From the east to the west there is hurry, in the north and the south a peal of hammers in fort and shipyard, and the clamor and clang of steel. In the rush and roar of engines, and clanking of derrick and crane, thou art weighed in the scales and found wanting, the balance of God, O Spain. Behold, I have stood on the mountains, and this was writ in the sky. She is weighed with the scales and found wanting. The balance of God holds on high. The balance he once weighed Babylon, the mother of harlots, in. One scale holds thy pride and power, an empire begotten of sin. Heavy with woe and torture, the crimes of a thousand years, mortared and welded together with fire and blood and tears. In the other, for justice and mercy, a blade with never a stain, is laid the sword of liberty, in the balance dips, O Spain. Summon thy vessels together, great is thy need for these, Cristobal Colon, Vizcaya, Oquendo Marie Therese. Let them be strong and many, for a vision I had by night, from that ancient wrongs thou hast done, the world came howling to the fight. From new world shores they gathered, Inca and Aztec Spain, to the Cuban shot but yesterday, our own dead seamen, Spain. Summon thy ships together, gather a mighty fleet, for a strong young nation is arming that never hath known defeat. Summon thy ships together, there on thy blood-stained sands, for a shadowy army gathers with manacled feet and hands a shadowy host of sorrows and of shames too black to tell, that reach with their horrible wounds for thee to drag thee down to hell. Myriad phantoms and spectres thou warest against in vain. Thou art weighed in the scales and found wanting the balance of God, O Spain. Madison Coeen A blockade was proclaimed of Havana and a number of other ports but no attempt was made to enter the harbor, which was crammed with mines and defended by strong fortifications. THE SPIRIT OF THE MAIN In battle line of somber gray our ships of war advance, as red cross knights in holy fray charged with avenging lance, and terrible shall be thy plight, O fleet of cruel Spain, for ever in our van doth fight the spirit of the main. And when beside Regulus Lake the great twin brethren came, a righteous fight for Rome to make against the deed of shame. So now a ghostly ship shall doom the fleet of treacherous Spain, before her guilty soul doth loom the spirit of the main. A wrath arrayed in peaceful white, as when asleep she lay, above the traitorous mine that night within Havana Bay. She glides before the avenging fleet, a sign of woe to Spain. Brave though her sons, how shall they meet the spirit of the main? Tudor Jenks Spain also had a fleet, and a strong one, on the ocean. It had been gathered together at the Cape Verde Islands, and on April 29, 1898, it put to sea and steamed westward into the Atlantic for a destination which could only be conjectured. THE DRAGON OF THE SEAS They say the Spanish ships are out to seize the Spanish main. Reach down the volume, boy, and read the story o'er again. How when the Spaniard had the might, he drenched the earth like rain, with human blood, and made it death to sail the Spanish main. 
with torch and steel and stake and rack he trampled out all truce until queen bess her leashes slipped and turned her sea-dogs loose god how they sprang and how they tore the grenville's hawkins drake remember boy they were your sires they made the spaniard quake they sprang like lions for their prey straight for the throat amain by twos by scores wherever they caught they fought the ships of spain when spain in dark uloa's bay broke doubly plighted faith bold hawkins found his way through fire for great elizabeth a bitter malt spain brewed that day she drained it to the lees her faithless guns that morn awoke the dragon of the seas from sea to sea he ravaged far a scourge with flaming breath where'er the spaniard sailed his ships sailed francis drake and death no port was safe against his ire secure no furthest shore the fairest day oft sank in fire before the dragon's roar he made the atlantic surges red round every spanish keel piled spanish decks with spanish dead the noblest of castile from del fuego's beetling coast to sleety hebrides he hounded down the spanish coast and swept the flaming seas he fought till spain's inmost lakes mid orange bowers set la mancha's daughters feared to sail lest they the dragon met king philip of his raven reft as forfeit claimed his head the great queen laughed his wrath to scorn and knighted drake instead and gave him ships and sent him forth to clear the spanish main for england and for england's brood and sink the fleets of spain and well he wrought his mighty work till on that fatal day he met his only conqueror in nombre dios bay there in his shotted hammock swung amid the surge's sweep he waits the lookout signal across the quiet deep in dreams of dark uloa's bay and spanish treachery and how he tracked magellan far across the unknown sea but if spain fires a single shot upon the spanish main she'll come to deem the dragon dead has waked to life again thomas nelson page the sailing of the fleet two fleets have sailed from spain the one would seek what lands uncharted ocean might conceal despised condemned and pitifully weak it found a world for leon in castile the other mighty arrogant and vain sought to subdue a people who were free ask of the storm gods where its galleons be whelmed neath the billows of the northern main a third is threatened on the westward track once gloriously traced its vessels sped with gold and crimson battle flags unfurled on colon's course but to sidonia's rack sure fated if so need shall come to need for sons of drake are lords of colon's world a portion of the american fleet started off to look for the spaniards and the remainder engaged in various minor operations off the cuban coast on may eleventh a party rode in and cut the cable at cienfuegos under a heavy fire cut the cables an incident of cienfuegos may eleventh eighteen ninety eight cut the cables the order read and the men were there there was no delay the ships hove to in cienfuegos bay the wisdom nashville marblehead beautiful grim and alert were they it was midway past the morning gray cut the cables the order said over the clouds of the dashing spray the guns were trained and ready for play picked from the nashville wind slow led grim death waits ashore they said lower the boats god speed give way did our untried navy lads obey away to their perilous work they sped now steady the keel keep stroke the oar they must go in close they must find the wires grim death is alert on that watching shore that deadly shore of the hundred fires in the lighthouse tower along the edge in the blockhouse waiting the guns are there on the lowland too in the tall dry sedge they are holding the word till the boats draw near one hundred feet from the water's edge dazzling clear is the sunlit air 
quick my men the moments are dear two hundred feet from the rifle pit and our untried lads still show no fear when they open now they're sure to hit no question even by sign they ask in silence they bend to their dangerous task quick now the shot from a smokeless gun cuts close and spatters the glistening brine now follows the roar of the battle begun but the boys were bent in the blazing sun like peaceful fishermen wetting a line they searched the sea while a shrieking blast swept shoreward swift as the lightning flies while the fan-like storm of the shells went past like a death wing clearing the hissing skies like a sheltering wing for the hurricane came from our own good guns and the foe might tell what wreck was wrought by their deadly aim for the foe went down where the hurricane fell it shattered the blockhouse leveled the tower it ripped the face of the smoking hill it beat the battle back hour by hour then for a little our guns were still for a little but that was the fatal breath the moments lull in the friendly crash for the long pit blazed with a vicious flash and eight fell two of them done to death once more the screen of the screaming shot with its driving canopy covered the men while they dragged and grappled and faltering not still dragged and searched and grappled again and they stayed right there till the work was done the cables were found and severed each one with an eighty-foot gap and the piece hauled in and stowed in place then under the din of that deafening storm that had swept the air for three long hours they turned from shore steady the keel there stroke the oar to the smoke-wreathed ships and under the guns they went up the side our untried ones quiet my brave boy hats off all they are here our untried boys in blue steady the block now all hands haul slow on the line there look to the crew six lads hurt and the colors there wrap two of them hold ease back the bow slow now on the line slack down with care steady their back on their own deck now the cables are cut sir eighty foot spread six boys hurt and two of them dead half mast the colors there's work to do there are two red marks on the starboard gun there is still some work that is not quite done for our untried boys that are tried and true it wasn't all play when they cut the wires well named is that bay of the hundred fires robert burns wilson june second eighteen ninety eight a few days later on may twenty fourth eighteen ninety eight the battleship oregon arrived at jupiter inlet florida after one of the most remarkable voyages in history on march ninth the ship then at san francisco was ordered to circle south america and join the atlantic squadron and the journey of nearly fifteen thousand miles was accomplished without starting a rivet the race of the oregon lights out and a prow turned toward the south and a canvas hiding each cannon's mouth and a ship like a silent ghost released is seeking her sister ships in the east a rush of water a foaming trail an ocean hound in a coat of mail a deck long lined with the lines of fate she roars good-bye at the golden gate on on alone without gong or bell but a burning fire like the fire of hell till the lookout starts as his glasses show the white cathedral of Calleo a moment's halt neath the slender spire food food for the men and food for the fire then out of the sea to rest no more till her keel is grounded on chile's shore south south god guard through the unknown wave where the chart nor compass may help or save where the hissing wraiths of the sea abide and few may pass through the stormy tide north north for a harbor far away for another breath in the burning day for a moment's shelter from speed and pain and a prow to the tropic sea again home home with the mother fleet to sleep till the call shall rise o'er the awful deep and the bell shall clang for the battle there and the voice of guns is the voice of prayer one more to the songs of the bold and free when your children gather about your knee when the goths and vandals come down in might as they came to the walls of rome one night 
when a lordly William of Deloraine shall ride by the Scottish lake again, when the Hessian spectres shall flit in air as Washington crosses the Delaware, when the eyes of babes shall be closed in dread as the story of Paul Revere is read, when your boys shall ask what the guns are for, then tell them the tale of the Spanish War, and the breathless millions that looked upon the matchless race of the Oregon. John James Meehan Battle Song of the Oregon The billowy headlands swiftly fly, the crested path I keep. My ribbon smoke stains many a sky, my embers dye the deep. A continent has hardly space, mid-ocean little more, wherein to trace my eager race, while clang the alarms of war. I come, the warship Oregon, my wake a whitening world, my cannon shotted, thundering on with battle flags unfurled. My land knows no successful foe, behold, to sink or save. From stoker's flame to gunner's aim, the race that rules the wave. A nation's prayers my bulwark are, though ne'er so wild the sea. Flow time or tide, come storm or war, throbs my machinery. Land Spain has lost, forever peer, from every lengthening coast, Till rings the cheer that proves me near, the flag of Columbia's host. Defiantly I have held my way from the vigorous shore where Drake Dreamed a new Albion in the day, he left new Spain a quake. His shining course retraced I fight, the selfsame foe he fought, All earth to light with signs of might which God our captain wrought. Made mad from Santiago's mouth, Spain's ships of battle dart, My bulk comes broadening from the south, a hurricane at heart. Its desperate armories blaze and boom, its ardent engines beat, And fiery doom finds root and bloom aboard the Spanish fleet. The hundred weight of the golden hind, with me are ponderous tons. The ordnance great, her deck that lined, would feed my ravening guns. Her spacious reach in months and years, I've shrunk to nights and days. Yet in my ears are ringing cheers, Sir Frank himself would raise. For conquereth not mine engine's breath, nor sides still clad and strong nor bulk nor rifles red with death, to Spain too these belong. What made that old armada break, this newer victory won. Jehovah spake by the sons of Drake at each incessant gun. I come the warship Oregon, my wake a whitening world, my cannon shotted, thundering on, with battle flags unfurled. My land knows no successful foe, behold, to sink or save. From stoker's flame to gunner's aim, the race that rules the wave. Wallace Rice A few days before, Sampson's fleet had bombarded San Juan, Puerto Rico, ineffectively, and then came word that the Spanish squadron had slipped into the harbor of Santiago, Cuba, to coal and refit. It was not until May 29th that its presence there was discovered by the Americans, who proceeded at once to blockade the harbor. Strike the Blow The four-way winds of the world have blown, and the ships have taken the wave. The legions march to the Trump's shrill call, neath the flag of the free and the brave. The hounds of the sea have trailed the foe, they have trailed and tracked him down. They wait no longer, but strike, O land, with the dauntless strength of thy strong right hand, strike the blow. The armored fleets, with their grinning guns, have the Spaniard in his lair. They have tracked him down where the ramparts frown, and they'll halt and hold him there. They have steamed in his wake, they have seen him go, they have bottled and corked him up. Then send him home to the under foam, till the wide sea shakes to the far blue dome, strike the blow. The Cuban dead and dying call, the children starved in the light. Of the aid that waits till the hero deed breaks broad in the tyrant's might. The starved and the weak in their hour of woe are calling land on thee. Then why delay in thy dauntless sway? On, on to the charge of the freedom way, strike the blow. They have taken the winds of the Carib seas, thy fleets that know not fear. 
their ribs of steel have yearned to reel in the dance of the cannoneer thy sons of the blue that wait to go would leap with a will to the charge then send them the word so long deferred they have listened late but they have not heard strike the blow they have listened late in the desolate land they have looked through brimming eyes and starving women have held dead babes to their heart with a thousand sighs on on to the end o land the foe beneath thy sword shall fall thy ships of steel have tracked them home ye are king of the land and king of the foam strike the blow on june first eighteen ninety eight a great portion of samson's fleet was off the harbor and it was decided to block the entrance by sinking the collier merrimac in the channel the enterprise was entrusted to lieutenant richmond pearson hobson and a crew of eight volunteers eight volunteers eight volunteers on an errand of death eight men who speaks eight men to go where the cannon's hot breath burns black the cheeks eight men to man the old merrimac's hulk eight men to sink the old steamer's black bulk blockade the channel where the spanish ships skulk eight men who speaks eight volunteers said the admiral's flags eight men who speaks who will sail under el moro's black crags sure death he seeks who is there willing to offer his life willing to march to this music of strife cannon for drum and torpedo for fife eight men who speaks eight volunteers on an errand of death eight men who speaks was there a man who in fear held his breath with fear-paled cheeks from every warship ascended a cheer from every sailor's lips burst the word here four thousand heroes their lives volunteer eight men who speaks lansing c bailey it was impossible to get the boat ready that night but at last at three thirty in the morning of june second she stood away for the harbor the spaniards saw her as she entered and rained a storm of fire upon her a moment later torn by her torpedoes and those of the enemy she sank to the bottom hobson and his men were taken prisoners by the spaniards the men of the merrimac june third eighteen ninety eight hail to hobson hail to hobson hail to all the valiant set claus and kelly danan phillips murphy montague charette whosoe'er we laud and laurel we shall be their debtors yet shame upon us shame upon us should the nation e'er forget though the tale be worn with the telling let the daring deed be sung surely ne'er brighter valor since this wheeling world was young thrilled men's souls to more than wonder till praise leaped from every tongue trapped at last the spanish sea-fox in the hill-locked harbor lay spake the admiral from his flagship rocking off the hidden bay we must close yon open portal lest he slip by night away volunteers the signal lifted rippling through the fleet it ran was there ever a deadlier venture was there ever a bolder plan yet the gallant sailors answered answered well nigh to a man ere the dawn's first rose flush kindled swiftly sped the chosen eight toward the batteries grimly frowning or the harbor's narrow gate sooth he holds his life but lightly who thus gives the dare to fate they had passed the outer portal where the guns grinned tier o'er tier when the portentous morrow thundered and the socapa echoed clear and estrella joined the chorus pandemoniac to hear heroes without hands to waver heroes without hearts to quail there they sat in the bulky collier mid the hurling spanish hail long shall float our starry banner if such lads beneath it sail hail to hobson hail to hobson hail to all the valiant set claus and kelly dane and phillips murphy montague charette whosoe'er we laud and laurel we shall be their debtors yet shame upon us shame upon us should the nation e'er forget clinton scholard 
THE VICTORY WRECK JUNE 3rd, 1898 O stealthily creeping Merrimack, hush low your fiery breath. You who gave life to ships of strife are sailing unto your death. I am ready and dressed for burial beneath the Cuban wave, but still I can fight for God and right while resting in my grave. O men that are sailing the Merrimack, your hearts are beating high, but send a prayer through the smoking air to your captain in the sky. We know there is death in every breath as we cling to the gunless deck, and grand will be our voyage if we can make of our ship a wreck. Now drop the bower of the Merrimack, and swing her to the tide. Now scuttle her braves, and bid the waves sweep into her shattered side. Through the flying hell of shot and shell we pass death with a sneer. We wrenched our life from a novel strife, and even our foemen cheer. Will Carleton Examination showed that the channel had not been blocked. The Merrimack had gone too far in, and had sunk lengthwise of the channel instead of across it. So the Spanish ships were not yet corked. Hobson and His Men June 3rd, 1898 Hobson went towards death and hell, Hobson and his men. Unregarding shot and shell, and the rain of fire that fell, calm, undaunted, fearless, bold, every heart a heart of gold, steadfast, daring, uncontrolled, Hobson and his men. Hobson came from death and hell, Hobson and his men. Shout the tidings, ring the bell, let the pealing anthems swell. From the wreck and raft and wave, from the shadow of the grave, every honor to the brave, Hobson and his men. Robert Loveman End of section 7「Section 8 of Poems of American History, Volume 5, The Period of Expansion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ed Humple. Poems of American History, Volume 5, Period of Expansion, by Various. Chapter 5. The War with Spain, Part 3. Meanwhile, nearer home, things were moving slowly enough, for the War Department developed a startling unpreparedness and inefficiency. Two hundred thousand volunteers were called for, but, though every state responded instantly, the work of mobilizing these troops was conducted in so bungling a fashion that, by the beginning of June, only three regiments, in addition to the regulars, had reached the rendezvous at Tampa, Florida. THE CALL TO COLORS Are you ready, O Virginia, Alabama, Tennessee? People of the Southland, answer, for the land hath need of thee. Here! from sandy rio grande where the texan horsemen ride here the hunters of kentucky hail from chatterawa's side every toiler in the cotton every rugged mountaineer velvet-voiced and iron-handed lifts his head to answer here some remain who charged with picket some survive who followed lee they shall lead their sons to battle for the flag if need there be are you ready, California, Arizona, Idaho? Come, O oh, come, unto the colors, heard you not the bugle blow? Falls a hush in San Francisco, in the busy hives of trade? In the vineyards of Sonoma fall the pruning knife and spade. In the mines of Colorado pick and drill are thrown aside. Idly in Seattle Harbor swing the merchants to the tide and a million mighty voices throb responsive like a drum, rolling from the rough Sierras, you have called us, and we come. O'er Missouri sounds the challenge, o'er the great lakes and the plain. Are you ready, Minnesota? Are you ready, men of Maine? From the woods of Ontonagon, from the farms of Illinois, from the looms of Massachusetts, we are ready, man and boy. Axe men free of Androscoggin, clerks who trudge the city's paves, 
Gloucester men who drag their plunder from the sullen hungry waves. Big-boned Swede and large-limbed German, Celt and Saxon swell the call, and the Adirondacks echo, we are ready, one and all. Truce to feud and peace to faction, all forgot is party zeal. When the warships clear for action, when the blue battalions wheel, Europe boasts her standing armies, serfs who blindly fight by trade. We have seven million soldiers, and a soul guides every blade. Laborers with arm and mattock, laborers with brain and pen, railroad prince and railroad brakemen build our line of fighting men. Flag of righteous wars, close mustered, gleam the bayonets row on row, where thy stars are sternly clustered with their daggers toward the foe. Alfred Gitterman Essex Regiment March Written for the 8th Massachusetts United States Volunteer Infantry in the Spanish War. Once more the flower of Essex is marching to the wars. We are up to serve the country where error fly her stars. Ashore, afloat, or far or near, to her who bore us true, we will do a freeman's duty as we were born to do. Lead the van, and may we lead it, God of armies, till the wrong shall cease. Speed the war, and may we speed it, to the sweet homecoming, God of peace. Our fathers fought their battles, and conquered for the right, three hundred years victorious from every stubborn fight, and still the flower of Essex from the ancient stock puts forth, where the bracing blue sea water stirs the sinews of the north. The foe on field, the foe on deck, to us is all the same. With both the flower of Essex has played a winning game. We threw them on the village green, we cowed them in Algiers, and ship to ship we shocked them in our first great naval years. We rode the great commander o'er the ice-bound Delaware, when the Christmas snow was falling in the dark and wintry air. And still the flower of Essex, like the heroes gone before, where the tide of danger surges, shall take the laboring oar. The flower that first lay bleeding along the bloody brook, full oft hath death upgathered in war's red reaping hook. Its home is on our highlands, tis sweeter than the rose, but sweetest in the battle's breath the flower of Essex blows. At the best a dear homecoming, at the worst a soldier's grave, beating the tropic jungle, ploughing the dark blue wave. But while the flower of Essex from the granite rock shall come, none but the dead shall cease to fight till all go marching home. March onward to the leaguer, where'er it may lie, the colours make the country, whatever be the sky, where round the flag of glory the storm terrific blows, we march, we sail, whoever fail, the flower of Essex goes. George Edward Woodbury The Gathering We are coming, Cuba, coming. Our starry banner shines above the swarming legions sweeping downward to the sea. From northern hill and western plain and towering southern pines, the serried hosts are gathering, and Cuba shall be free. We are coming, Cuba, coming, thy sturdy patriots brave, who fight as fought our fathers in the old time long ago, shall see the Spanish squadrons sink beneath the whelming wave, and plant their own loved banner on the ramparts of their foe. We are coming, Cuba, coming, across the billows foam, our gallant ships are bearing our bravest down to thee, while earnest prayers are rising from every freeman's home, that freedom's God may lead them on, and Cuba shall be free. Herbert B. Sweat It was evident that an army was badly needed to support the fleet at Santiago, and on June 7, 1898, the force at Tampa was ordered to embark for that place, under command of General William Shafter. Everything was confusion and it was not until June 14th that the transports finally made their way down to the bay. Comrades Now from their slumber waking, the long sleep men thought death, the war-gods rise, inhaling deep the cannon's fiery breath. 
their mighty arms uplifted, their gleaming eyes aglow, with the steadfast light of battle as it blazed long years ago. Now from the clouds they summon the captains of the past, still sailing in their astral ships the starlit spaces vast, and from Valhalla's peaceful plains the great commanders come, and marshal again their armies to the beat of the muffled drum. His phantom sails unfurling, McDonough sweeps amain, where once his Yankee sailors fought the Battle of Champlain. And over Erie's waters again his flagship sweeps, while Perry on the quarter deck his endless vigil keeps. Silent as mists that hover, when twilight shadows fall, the ghosts of the royal armies foregather at the call, and their glorious chiefs are with them from conflicts lost or won as they gather round one mighty shade the shade of washington side by side with the warships that sail for the hostile fleet the ships of the past are sailing and the dauntless comrades meet and standing shoulder to shoulder the armed spirits come and march with our battalions to the beat of the muffled drum henry r door the fleet reached santiago june twentieth and shafter decided to move directly upon the city but the army had lost or forgotten its lighters and launches so the task of disembarking it fell upon the navy and was admirably performed next morning general joseph wheeler with four squadrons of dismounted cavalry was ordered forward two of these squadrons were composed of the rough riders under command of leonard wood and theodore roosevelt Wheeler's Brigade at Santiago Beneath the blistering tropical sun, the column is standing ready, awaiting the fateful command of one whose word will ring out to an answering shout to prove it alert and steady. In a stirring chorus, all of them sung with singleness of endeavor, though some to the bonny blue flag had swung, and some to the Union forever. The order came sharp through the desperate air, and the long ranks rose to follow, till their dancing banners shone more fair than the brightest ray of the Cuban bay or the hill in the jungled hollow. Into Maryland some in the days gone by had fought through the combat's rumble, and some for freedom's battle cry had seen the broad earth crumble. Full many a widow weeps in the night, who had been a man's wife in the morning. For the banners we loved we bore to the height where the enemy stood as a hero should his valor his country adorning. But drops of pride with your tears of grief, ye American women, mix ye. For the North and the South with a Southern chief kept time to the tune of Dixie. Wallace Rice After great confusion and several days' delay, the remainder of the army came up, and on the afternoon of june thirtieth a general advance was ordered by dawn of july first the troops were in position and the attack began deeds of valor at santiago june first eighteen ninety eight who cries that the days of daring are those that are faded far that never a light burns planet bright to be hailed as the hero's star let the deeds of the dead be laurelled, the brave of the elder years. But a song, we say, for the men of today who have proved themselves their peers. High in the vault of the tropic sky is the garish eye of the sun, and down in its crown of guns a frown looks the hilltop to be won. There is the trench where the Spaniard lurks, his hold in his hiding place, and he who would cross the space between must meet death face to face. The black mouth belch and thunder, and the shrapnel shrieks and flies. Where are the fain and the fearless, the lads with the dauntless eyes? Will the moment find them wanting? Nay, but with valor stirred, like the leashed hound on the coursing ground, they wait but the warning word. Charge, and the line moves forward, moves with a shout and a swing, while sharper far than the cactus thorn is the spiteful bullet sting. Now they are out in the open, and now they are breasting the slope, while into the eyes of death they gaze as into the eyes of hope. Never they wait nor waver, but on they clamor and on, 
with up with the flag of the stripes and stars and down with the flag of the don what should they bear through the shot-rent air but rout to the ranks of spain for the blood that throbs in their hearts is the blood of the boys of anthony wayne see they have taken the trenches where are the foemen gone and now old glory waves in the breeze from the heights of san juan and so while the dead are laurelled the brave of their elder years a song we say for the men of to-day who have proved themselves their peers clinton scholard the morning was consumed in blundering about under the spanish fire trying vainly to carry out the orders of a general lying in a hammock far in the rear finally the subordinate commanders acted for themselves lawton ludlow and chaffee took the fort of el caney and the rough riders charged san juan the charge at santiago july first eighteen ninety eight with shot and shell like a loosened hell smiting them left and right they rise or fall on the sloping wall of beetling bush and height they do not shrink at the awful brink of the rifle's hurtling breath but onward press as their ranks grow less to the open arms of death through a storm of lead or maimed and dead onward and up they go till hand to hand the unflinching band grapple the stubborn foe or men that reel mid glint of steel bellow or boom of gun they leap and shout over each redoubt till the final trench is won o charge sublime over dust and grime each hero hurls his name in shot or shell like a molten hell to the topmost heights of fame and prone or stiff under bush and cliff wounded or dead men lie while the tropic sun on a grand deed done looks with his piercing eye william hamilton hayne private blair of the regulars july first eighteen ninety eight it was private blair of the regulars before dread el caney who felt with every throb of his wound the life tide ebb away as he dwelt in a fevered dream on the home of his youthful years he heard near by the moan and sigh of two of the volunteers he raised them up and gazed at them and likely lads they were but when he bade them pluck up heart he found they could not stir then a bullet ploughed the sodden loam and his fearless face grew dark for he saw through the blur a sharpshooter who made the twain his mark and his strength leaped into his limbs again and his fading eye burned bright and he gripped his gun with a steady hand and glanced along the sight then another voice in that choir of fire outspake with a deadly stress and in the trench at el caney there lurked a spaniard less but still the moans of the volunteers went up through the murky air and there kindled the light of a noble thought in the brain of private blair the flask at his side he had drained it dry in the blistering scorch and shine so unappalled he crept and crawled in the face of the firing line the whirring bullets sped o'erhead and the great shells burst with a roar and the shrapnel tore the ground around like the tusks of the bristly boar but on he went with his high intent till he covered the space between and came to the place where the spaniard lay and clutched his full canteen then he writhed him back o'er the bloody track while death drummed loud in his ears and he pressed the draught he would fain have quaffed to the lips of the volunteers drink cried he don't think of me for i'm only a regular while you have homes in the motherland where your waiting loved ones are then his soul was sped to the place of the dead all praise to the men who dare and honor be from sea to sea to the deed of private blair clinton scholard the fort on san juan was carried and held all the next day despite spanish attacks but shafter was alarmed and considered withdrawing the army though strongly opposed by general wheeler who had been in the thick of the fighting from the very first wheeler at santiago into the thick of the flight we into the thick of the fight he went pallid and sick and wan 
born in an ambulance to the front, a ghostly wisp of a man. But the fighting soul of a fighting man, approved in the long ago, went to the front in that ambulance, and the body of fighting Joe. Out from the front they were coming back, smitten of Spanish shells, wounded boys from the Vermont hills in the Alabama dells. Put them into this ambulance. I'll ride to the front, he said. And he climbed to the saddle and rode right on, that little old ex confed. From end to end of the long blue ranks rose up the ringing cheers, and many a powder-blackened face was furrowed with sudden tears, as with flashing eyes and gleaming sword and hair and beard of snow, into the hell of shot and shell rode little old fighting Joe. Sick with fever and racked with pain, he could not stay away, for he heard the song of the yesteryear in the deep-mouthed cannon's bay. He heard in the calling song of the guns there was work for him to do, where his country's best blood splashed and flowed round the old red, white, and blue. Fevered body and hero heart, this union's heart to you, beats out in love and reverence, and to each dear boy in blue, who stood or fell mid the shot and shell, and cheered in the face of the foe, as wan and white to the heart of the fight rode little old fighting Joe. James Lindsay Gordon Then, suddenly, sorrow gave place to joy, and discouragement to enthusiasm for a great victory won. At nine o'clock on the morning of Sunday, July 3rd, 1898, the Spanish fleet came rushing out of the harbor in a mad effort to escape. The American ships closed in, and a battle to the death began, which ended in the total destruction of the Spanish fleet. Spain's Last Armada July 3rd, 1898 They fling their flags upon the morn, their safeties held a thing for scorn, as to the fray the Spaniards on the wings of war are borne. Their sullen smoke clouds writhe and reel, and sullen their ships of steel, already cannon lanyards from the fighting tops to keel. They glance upon the golden air, one glancing helpless, hopeless prayer, to ask that swift and thorough be the victory falling there. Then giants with a cheer and sigh burst forth to battle and to die beneath the walls of Morrow on that morning in July. The Teresa heads the haughty train to bear the admiral of Spain. She rushes hurtling, whitening, like the summer hurricane. El Morrow glowers in his might. Socapa crimsons with the fight. The Oquendo's lunging lightning blazes through her somber night. In desperate and eager dash, the Vizcaya hurls her vivid flash, as wild upon the waters her enormous batteries crash. Like spindrift scuds, the fleet cologne, and on her bubbling wake bestrown, lurch hungry for the slaughter, El Furor and El Pluton. Round Santiago's armored crest, serene on their gray valor dressed, our behemoths lie quiet, watching well from south and west. Their keen eyes spy the harbor reek, the signals dance, the signals speak, then breaks the blasting riot, as our broadsides storm and shriek. Quick, poising on her eagle wings, the Brooklyn into battle swings, the wide sky falls in wonders, as the titan Texas springs. The Iowa, in monster leaps, goes bellowing above the deeps, the Indiana thunders, as her terror onward sweeps. And hovering near and hovering low, until the moment strikes to go, in gallantry the Gloucester swoops down on her double foe. She volleys, the Fuhrer falls lame, again the Pluton's aflame, hurrah, on high she's tossed her, gone the grim destroyer's fame. And louder yet and louder roar the Oregon's black cannon o'er, the clangor and the booming all along the Cuban shore. She's swifting down her Valkyr path, her sword sharp for the aftermath, with leaven in her glooming like Jehovah in his wrath. Great ensigns snap and shine in air above the furious onslaught where our sailors cheer the battle, danger but a thing to dare. Our gunners speed as off they've sped, their hail of shrilling, shattering lead, swift sure our rifles rattle, and the foemen's decks are red. Like baying bloodhounds lope our ships, adrip with fire their cannon's lips, 
we scourge the fleeing spanish whistling wheels from scorpion whips till livid in the ghastly glare they tremble on in dread despair and thoughts of victory vanish in the carnage they must bear where cuban coasts in beauty bloom where cuban breakers swirl and boom the teresa's onset slackens in a scarlet spray of doom near nimanima's greening hill the streaming flames cry down her will her vast hull blows and blackens pray to every mortal ill on juan gonzalez foaming strand the oquendo plunges neath our hand her armaments all strangled and her hope a showering brand she strikes and grinds upon the reef and shuddering there in utter grief in misery and mangled wastes away beside her chief the vicaya never more shall ride from out a seradero's tide with hate upon her forehead ne'er again shall pass in pride beneath our fearful battle spell she moaned and struggled flared and fell to lie a gleam and horrid while the piling fires swell thence from the wreck of spain alone tears on the terrified cologne in bitter anguish crying like a storm bird forth she's flown her throbbing engines creak and thrum she sees a beam the brooklyn come for life she's gasping flying for the combat she is dumb till then the man behind the gun had wrought whatever must be done here now beside our boilers is the fight fought out and won where great machines pulse on and beat a swelter in the humming heat the nation's nameless toilers make her mastery complete the cape of the cross cast out a stone against the course of the cologne despairing and inglorious on the wind her white flags thrown spain's last armada lost and wan lies where the tarquino's stream rolls on as round the world victorious looms the dreadnought oregon the sparkling day-beams softly flow to glint the twilight afterglow the banner sinks in splendor that in battle ne'er was low the music of our country's hymn rings out like songs of seraphim fond memories and tender fill the evening fair and dim our huge ships rise in majesty unchallenged o'er the glittering sea above them white stars cluster mighty emblem of the free and all adown the long sea lane the fitful balefires wax and wane to shed their lurid lustre on the empire that was spain wallace rice santiago july third eighteen ninety eight in the stagnant pride of an outworn race the spaniard sailed the sea till we hailed him up to god's judgment place and smashed him by god's decree out from the harbor belching smoke came dashing seaward the spanish ships and from our decks a great shout broke then our hearts came up and set us a choke for joy that we had them at last at grips no need for signals to get us away we were off at score with our screws agleam through the blistering weeks we'd watched the bay and our captains had need not word to say save to bellow and curse down the pipes for steam leading the pack in its frightened flight the colon went foaming away to the west her tall iron bulwarks black as night and her great black funnels sharp in sight against the green-clad hills in their peace and rest her big Ontario blazed away at the Indiana, our first in line. The short-range shot drenched our decks with spray, while thirteen inchers, in answering play, ripped straight through her frame to her very spine. Straight to its end went our winning fight, with the thunder of guns and a mighty roar, our hail of iron casting withering blight, turning the Spanish ships in their flight to a shorter death on the rock-bound shore. The colon, making her reckless race, with the Brooklyn and Oregon close abeam, went dashing landward and stopped the chase by grinding her way to her dying place in a raging outburst of flame and steam. So the others, facing their desperate luck, drove headlong on to their rock-dealt death, the Vizcaya yielding before she struck, the riddled destroyers, a huddled ruck, sinking and gasping for drowning breath so that flying battle surged down the coast 
with its echoing roar from the Cuban land. So the dying warships gave up the ghost, so we shattered and mangled the Philistine host. So the fight was won that our Samson planned. Thomas A. Janifer The American battleships were practically uninjured, and the fleet had only lost two men, one killed and one injured, both on the Brooklyn. The Spanish loss was 350 killed or drowned, 160 wounded, and 1,774 taken prisoners. The Fleet at Santiago, July 3, 1898 The heart leaps with the pride of their story, predestinate lords of the sea. They are heirs of the flag in its glory. They are sons of the soil it keeps free. For their deeds the serene exaltation of a cause that was stained with no shame for their dead the proud tears of a nation their fame shall endure with its fame the fervor that grim unrelenting the founders in homespun had fired with blood the free compact cementing was the flame that their souls had inspired they were sons of the dark tribulations of the perilous days of the birth of a nation sprung free among nations a new hope to the children of earth. They were nerved by the old deeds of daring, every tale of Decatur they knew, every ship that, the bright banner wearing, shot to keep it afloat in the blue. They were spurred by the splendor undying of Somer's fierce fling in the bay, and the watchword that Lawrence died crying, and of Cushing's calm courage were they. By the echo of guns at whose thunder Old monarchies crumbled and fell, when the warships were shattered asunder, and their pennants went down in the swell. By the strength of the race that, unfearing, faces death till the death of the last, or has sunk with the fierce Saxon cheering, its colors still nailed to the mast. So they fought, and the stern race immortal, of Cromwell and Hampton and Penn, has thrown open another closed portal, stricken chains from a new race of men. So they fought, so they won, so above them blazed the light of a consecrate aim. Empty words, who may tell how we love them, how we thrill with the joy of their fame. Charles E. Russell End of Section 8